oh, in the name of terrorism. The weak link in a nuclear power plant is not the dome of the reactor that we see in photographs. It's the spent fuel pond that no one even thinks about. We have a lightly guarded swimming pool containing many cores worth of nuclear materials that is subject to a terrorist attack. In the cooling pools with the spent fuel, there's 30 times as much radiation as that contained in a reactor core, which is about a thousand Hiroshima-sized bombs. So you multiply the size of Pennsylvania by 30 because of the cooling pools and you can contaminate many states of the United States. These, I mean, terrorists don't need nuclear weapons. They're, out, they're deployed all over the country. Many people think that commercial and weapons, nuclear energy, are two different entities. That's wrong. There's no law of physics preventing a commercial facility being turned into a weapons facility. That separation is in the minds of bureaucrats. They have the same nuclear fuel cycle. They have the same processing, the same mining, milling, and enrichment of uranium, and they share the same waste facilities. Even the people who run the plants, we're talking about Exxon Nuclear, for example, that is heavily in, of course, oil as well as nuclear energy. We're talking about the same companies, the same individuals that operate one and operate the other. But some people have said that a commercial nuclear power plant can never be made into a weapons plant and never the twain shall meet. That's been the mantra for 40 years until President Clinton finally let the cat out of the bag. President Clinton was faced with a reactor, a Russian reactor, that was going to be sold to the Iranians. A commercial reactor that fulfilled every single obligation of the International Atomic Energy Commission. Well, Bill Clinton, when he was president, invoked the full power of the presidency to say that he opposed the sale of Russian reactors to Iran because everybody knows, he said, that you can make bombs from a commercial nuclear power plant. Well, it took the President of the United States to rip off the fiction that there is a wall between commercial energy and nuclear energy. The Department of Energy is now intending to take plutonium from Russia and from decommissioned nuclear bombs to Georgia and to reprocess it and purify it specifically for America to make many more hydrogen bombs even though the Cold War is over. They say they're going to mix the plutonium with uranium for MOX fuel, mixed oxide fuel, and put it in civilian power plants, which is terribly dangerous because if there's a meltdown, you get much more plutonium than you would just the 500 pounds released from an ordinary uranium powered plant if you mix plutonium in with the uranium fuel. But actually, the hidden agenda is to create more bombs from the plutonium. This is really evil. Right now, the president is spending hundreds of millions of dollars to research bunker-busting nuclear weapons. The United States is pursuing a new set of nuclear weapons. It doesn't make sense. You talk about mixed messages. We're telling other people, you can't have nuclear weapons, but we're pursuing a new nuclear weapon that we might even contemplate using. Not only are we not cutting nuclear weapons or making offers to negotiate down and work for nuclear weapons-free world, we are spending six and a half billion dollars a year on new nuclear weapons research and development. And we're talking about mini nukes that are more usable. We're talking about bunker busters that will be nuclear tipped. This is like insanity because it's a terrible threat to every other country on, on the planet. So they want to keep up with us. So we're fueling an arms race and add to that our determination to weaponize space. That's very threatening to China and Russia because that means we have a first strike capacity and they have no, nothing to hit us back with. So we're going to start an arms race in space too. George Bush has called for a two-thirds reduction in nuclear arms even as testing goes into cyberspace, even as testing goes into simulations, as we gear up for third generation hydrogen warheads. Third generation hydrogen warheads are designer hydrogen warheads. They're warheads that can go underground and knock out bunker positions. They're warheads that can be used in the jungle, in the desert, in the Arctic, and in outer space. 
These are designer hydrogen bombs, third generation bombs, and that's what George Bush really wants, to take the nuclear arms race into outer space and to take the nuclear arms race underground, to knock out underground bunker positions with nuclear bombs to be dropped also over cities. Uh, during the Gulf War, uh, George Bush Sr. was given a plan to drop an atomic bomb over Baghdad. Music Magazine revealed that plan. An electromagnetic pulse would be emitted from a hydrogen bomb detonated over Baghdad. It would wipe out all communication systems and radar in Baghdad leaving American pilots without any anti-aircraft batteries. Also, the plan to reduce nuclear weapons by two-thirds neglects the fact that these weapons are not going to be dismantled. We're not going to take them apart. We're going to simply stockpile them. They'll be placed in a cabinet so that on a moment's notice, we can rev up the nuclear arms race literally overnight. And so I support the reduction of any nuclear weapon. Even one nuclear bomb dismantled, I support. However, let's not fool ourselves. These plans to reduce the nuclear arsenal will simply shell these nuclear weapons into a cabinet where they can be taken out on a moment's notice. At this point, frankly, I don't think we can get rid of North Korea's nuclear weapons. I don't think we can stop Iran from reprocessing, which it's trying to do so that it gets weapons grade material, which could also be a peaceful use of nuclear weapons, so you don't know. I mean, they keep saying it's just for peaceful use. But at this point, I don't think we are going to have any influence with any of those countries until we say that we have to get rid of all the nuclear weapons. There's been an enormous emphasis by the Bush administration to revive the fortunes of commercial nuclear power as well as weapons power, especially in outer space. The Bush administration is pushing Project Prometheus. Project Prometheus is a nuclear rocket. We're not talking about huge reactors that will drive rockets, rockets to the moon, rockets to the planet Mars. And of course, we're not talking about hundreds of pounds of enriched uranium, perhaps, being stored in reactors that will be sent into outer space. Now, the Bush administration says in its defense that the reactor won't be turned on until the rocket gets into orbit. And then it will be shot to the moon and shot to Mars. However, we've seen it before. Several decades ago, Cosmos 954, a Soviet satellite, was also turned on and out of space. It lost altitude, and it plunged into Canada. Thank God it did not hit a populated area, or there would have been a catastrophe beyond comprehension. 100 pounds of highly enriched uranium plowed into the Northwest Territories of Canada on Cosmos 954. The reactor broke up on impact, disintegrated, and spewed radiation over a distance of 100 miles. If we were to nuclearize outer space and develop anti-satellite, anti-missile capabilities, who is the most vulnerable to killer satellite technology? We are. We have the most communication satellites. We have the most weather satellites. We're heavily dependent upon communication satellites. One small hydrogen bomb in space would cause enormous havoc to the entire communications, military, and commercial sectors of this country by blinding us. In the middle of a fight, it's like throwing sand in the enemy's eyes, blinding them. We are the most vulnerable if we begin the process of nuclearizing and weaponizing outer space. The only way to protect Americans is to stop weaponization of space and get rid of all the nuclear weapons. And if we took the lead, we could get every other country to follow us. The Bush administration's policies have come with a complete refusal to acknowledge that there are any health risks from nuclear reactors from uh, routine emissions into the environment. The Bush administration I see is the most dangerous administration this country has ever had. In the clear light of global warming, and the destruction of the planet. They persist 